morning. It's Friday. It's about 7.15. I'm at home. I'm going to try and do just kind of like a day in my life type vlog on a Friday. And also talk about just like some of the habits I'm trying to put into place or expand upon in 2023. I haven't vlogged since 2022, so happy new year. Um, if you're new here, my name is LaTanya. I'm an eighth grade teacher in Southern California. I teach social studies, history, and language arts. And yeah, so I'm gonna try and just kind of share with you what I'm trying to do in 2023 to make for a better year and then just kind of show you like a typical day in my life. Um, today is Friday, like I said, it's a spirit day at school. Every Friday has some sort of theme and it's 90s day. So I'm gonna show you my little 90s day outfit. Um, I don't know how well this is gonna translate on camera, but this is basically a jumpsuit with parachute pants, like, and if you lived in the 90s, you remember the MC Hammer pants. Like, I don't really know why we thought this was cute. I never owned any in the 90s. So I just got this off of Amazon. It's obviously very comfortable. And then I'm wearing this little jean jacket over it because it is very cold. And I'll probably put another coat on over that. Um, and then a white top underneath. And these shoes, these are some of my Spain shoes. These are some Reeboks that I got from DSW. Very comfortable accessories it's been a while since i've done this i'm just wearing this band for my apple watch it's pink and then i am wearing some warby parker frames i don't really get to wear very often they have like a pink tone to it and then i'm wearing some of my anna luisa earrings these are some of my newer ones these are silver hoops i have gold hoops like this um these are the tia I think they're either Tia or low medium. I'll have to look it up. Um, but if you don't know, I work, have been working with Anna Luisa for a couple years. I love these hoop earrings. I had them in gold first and then they, I just recently saw they had them in silver. So of course I ordered them. Um, I do believe that they are going to be having a Valentine's Day special coming up. So I will make sure to put the link in the description box. And if you see this outside of the sale, they always have um, something going on. And I also have a discount code. So I will be sure to put that in um, my description box and as always if you're wondering i'm a fan of anna luisa for the quality the style the sustainability all of that so i'm gonna go downstairs i've taken some footage so far already you saw me wake up in the morning friday mornings i go to orange theory i have to be there at 5 a.m i prefer to start on the treadmill it's very competitive so you kind of need to get there early to make sure you get a treadmill so I have to wake up at like 4.20, 4.30 in the morning on Fridays, get there. And then the thing that helps me to get there is knowing that on Fridays I treat myself to Starbucks. So then I think I got some footage of me leaving to pick up my mobile order. So I'm going to go downstairs, get all that stuff together, and then I'm going to head to work. So I'll see you there. I am now in my classroom. I've been here for about 10 to 15 minutes. Everything is set up for the day. When I come in, I have to make sure the agenda is projected on the screen, change the date, get my stuff out and situated, make sure I have my little to-do list um, in my planner, which I just finished doing. Why is this not fitting? Um, I use a day designer. I don't use a teacher planner anymore. I haven't actually for a couple years because I do all my lesson planning on plan book. But in case you wanna know what are my top priorities for today, I need to book a hotel for the CATA conference, which is a conference for teachers that work with leadership groups on campus. I registered for that conference last night and now I need to find a hotel. Um, the school's gonna reimburse me for everything. I need to go to the post office and I need to do some lesson planning. Like those are my top three things to accomplish as a person today um and so that's those are my must do's when i get here like i have to at least have all that stuff set up and i do so today first let me do my starbucks taste test um i always get a vanilla sweet cream cold brew i'm trying to reduce the amount of sugar 
that I consume. That's one of my healthy habits that I'm trying to put in place in 2023. It's just trying to continue to reduce the amount of sugar intake. So I still get the vanilla sweet cream cold brew. I just have them put sugar-free vanilla syrup in it instead of the regular syrup. And it doesn't taste any different if you're wondering, but let me do the taste test of this one. I'm gonna give that a 7.5. <laughs> so I got that as a drink and then I get the egg bites, the bacon, um, and gear. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but those are the egg bites I get. So I'm gonna go over to Taylor and see what she's looking like for 90s day. Um, I'm gonna take you guys along with me and then I'm gonna get my day started. The bell rings, the first bell rings at seven, 55 kids have to be in class by eight otherwise they're tardy and then my first period will be leadership and then my second period will be my prep period and during that time i'll try and tell you um what the plan is in the classroom for today so i'm gonna head over to taylor's see if she's ready to share what her 90s vibe is today when we left school yesterday we were thinking she should do like a 90s mom vibe so we'll see if that's what she ended up doing taylor she told me the fit is fitting. The fit is fitting. And it is. Okay. She is giving 90s mom, I'm going to the grocery store before I get the kids. <laughs> Look. Look at it. Uh, it's a denim on denim. Note the little, little the scrunchy. little scrunchie right there. She even has the some little, weight. The little mom with her little neck. Lettuce, whatever this yeah. is called. The She's got a, like, the jeans are up high. There's a belt. Mm -hmm. Um. um so once again, you're too. I'm proud of. I'm proud of you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Last year's life was totally. Well, I will just be up there with just the actual registration. And I'll go ahead and go down now. Okay. It sounds like she wanted a separate room, so I think she talked to Jonathan. So I'm gonna, but I'm gonna call her now because the one hotel I was gonna book last night already sold out. So I found one that's like five minutes from the conference. So yeah, because I didn't book it last night because I was like, well, let me double check everything with Carla. I know. I know. Lesson learned. <laughs> All right, it is 9.39. I have about 10 minutes of my prep left. I had to spend a, a good chunk of it um, booking the hotel for the conference that I'm going to in March. I think I mentioned that earlier. So I got that done and then I had to call the school secretary to make sure I knew what I needed to provide her, what I need to save and hold on to to be reimbursed by the district. I got that figured out. And basically I need to have a whole envelope of like documentation and receipts so that when I get back from the conference, um, I can get reimbursed. I also had to call the people at CATA because my password, um, I, I just applied for membership where I think I just went through the processes of renewing it and I have been trying to set up a password and username and it kept saying that it was gonna send me <laughs> a, a link to do that and I wasn't getting it. So I had to call the people at CATA to see if I was in there correctly. So I think I'm getting that fixed. Um, so yeah, that took up a good chunk of my prep. So as far as what is happening in my core classes today, by core classes, I mean these are the students that are um, responsible or that I am responsible for um, with language arts, social studies, and history. My first period is a leadership class. I am responsible for them, but they're not considered like my core class. So in language arts, we just started or just did a second read of the story Abuela and Vince the Zero. I use Study Sync. Um, we finished Unit 1, which is focused on suspense. This year, the majority of the team that I work with decided to skip Unit 2 in Study Sync, which is all focused on World War II. Um, and we're skipping that because World War II is a big topic of study in high school. And in my opinion, one of the reasons why I was glad to skip it or okay with skipping it is because the selections that are provided in unit two of study sync 
Uh, the kids don't really know what World War II was about, so it's hard for them to understand the context of these things without you doing a lot of back work and almost teaching a whole history lesson on the causes of World War II. Um, so I was perfectly fine with skipping to Unit 3, which is titled A Moral Compass. And so we read Abuela Vince the Zero, which is about a teenage girl whose family is Puerto Rican by heritage, and her abuela comes to visit from Puerto Rico, and she's just really embarrassed by her grandmother for a variety of things. So we read it, we discussed the questions that they will be responsible for answering on their first read assignment. And today, I think they're gonna at least start the first read assignment for that, um, depending on time. The main focus is going to be history, um, because we are going to have our first of four town hall meetings. So we are at the point in history where the American Revolution is about to occur. Full disclosure, I don't know how to do this. I don't know how other teachers are moving faster than me, but my teammates are at least, one is two lessons ahead of me, but the rest of them I feel like are five to six, five to seven lessons ahead of me in history which on the one hand makes me feel bad because I'm like, I don't know wh how, why I'm moving so slow or how they are able to move so fast. But on the other hand, I'm okay with my pace because I really feel like my kids are retaining the information. And that's not to say they're not retaining it in other classes. I just know that if I were moving any faster, I don't know that my kids would retain the information they have retained. And I do teach an RSP cluster, so I do have kids that need things to be broken down a little bit more specifically than kids that are not um, included in an RSP cluster class. So we're gonna talk about, or we're in the process of talking about the causes and things that led up to the Revolutionary War. And so one of the activities in History Alive, which is the textbook we use, is these colonial town hall meetings. So groups of three have been assigned a person that they are representing or being during these town hall meetings. They are given an information card about them and they are told whether or not this person is considered a patriot, a loyalist, or a neutralist. So, um, one second. Miss Robinson? Hi. They're just doing that all on their own. Yeah. Next week, they do the peer reading. So this week, they just turn it in when they're ready, but by midnight. Yeah, so like this is the rough draft. The next week I think is when they have like a peer review it and edit it. And then the following week they just submit the final draft. But none of those blocks will involve like, aside from them sitting down with the peer, a lesson or class time. So I would just check in with him, but besides that, I don't know if there's anything else you can or should be doing. You know what I mean? Like. <laughs> Because I've talked to him, Darren's talked to him, you've talked to him, like, um, maybe check in with Matthew because he's been absent. Uh, but I don't, yeah. Yeah, so I would, but I wouldn't stress yourself out. I don't think there's any more that you should have been doing. So, <laughs> I know. You, you are, you are in my book, you are, so. <laughs> okay, all right, uh-huh, bye. So, they get these roll cards that give them information about their person. Um, some of them are well-known people like Benjamin Franklin's one of them. Um, Sam, Adam, Sam Adams is another. They're told if they're a patriot, loyalist, or a neutralist, and then information that would be helpful to them as they prepare um, the statements they're gonna make in these town hall meetings. So the way it's laid out is we'll learn about a few historical moment, moments. So we've learned about the Proclamation of 1763, the Stamp Act, and the Quartering Act. So today we're gonna have a town hall meeting because the community isn't quite sure how to interact or deal with Britain given these actions that they've taken. So at the town hall meeting, uh, members of the panel will talk about how they feel in regards to what's happened and what they think Collins colonists in general should do. So this is our first town hall meeting, first for them, first for me, because this is a new curriculum that I'm using. So it'll be interesting to see how it goes. Um, I have been procuring costumes and things over the course of the year to kind of make these activities come more to life. So one of the things that I have is I have the sweatshirt. This is for people that are the colonists. Um, I'm gonna get another one. They have a different variation 
for Patriots, but I have some wigs and all of that. I don't know that I'll pull all that out, but at some point costumes will be worn. So that's the plan. I will try and get some footage of that. Um, but yeah, the bell's gonna ring. My prep's gonna end in a few minutes. So I'm gonna I'm check out and I will let you know how the town hall meetings go. Um, even if I don't get footage of it for you guys. So talk to you soon. All right, thank you so much ladies and gentlemen for being here. So our question tonight that I will be posing to each of you is the following. Given all of the things that have been happening in our colonies, should the colonists, our community members, comply with, oppose, or rebel against the British government at this time? Um, since you started with introductions, we're gonna start down here and have the Earl stand and share what you believe we should do. Uh, oh, I do not tell that way. I believe they should oppose because if they rebel, it's gonna cause even more conflict for everybody. If they oppose, they could talk it out. Our government can think about it. We will hear your opinions because I am a member of parliament. I will make sure you guys have a say in this. Mm -hmm. So I believe everyone just should oppose, do the protest, boycott, but not rebel. Not rebel, so not declaring independence from Britain. Okay. Yes, you, Lovely. Um, I think that we should rebel against the stamp acts and the other acts because if we keep on continuing with this and we don't oppose it immediately, then it will only things get worse. So we need to take a stand while we can. Nice, nice. The colonists should respond to the British government at this time by opposing. I do not agree with declaring independence because that will lead to fighting. Generally, fighting may lead to war or loss of money. I fear that I may become poor. After all, look at what happened to us after the French and Indian War. The British started taxing us without our consent mm -hmm. for every single piece of paper we used. If another war begins, we'll only get taxed again. And you, ma'am, down there, with the beautiful bangs dangling. <laughs> Can you come back to me, my things? Sure, sure. You, sir. <laughs> Even though I think we shouldn't be at these town meetings, I will give my bleat in the ear. I think we should obey right now. Even though the parliament has made some dumb decisions with the taxes, I think we should obey and listen to them for right now. Because the quarter gap and the proclamation is a good law right now mm. and you sir down there as Benjamin Franklin I feel we should rebel because the parliament they're never going to listen unless we make a difference so we need to take a stand and rebel so that they can listen to what we have to say mm -hmm. and ma'am down there do you still need a moment yes. <laughs> community are we feeling swayed in any way so far no. 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 You're feeling a little loyalty. You're feeling a little loyalty? That's my bun! That's my bun! Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Is anyone feeling like they might be loyal That's my mic! That's my mic! That's my mic! That's your mic. Oh, that's an elf. Mercy? Is that is that who you are down there? No, you're Mercy. Oh. Rebecca? Rebecca? So what's wrong with this quill and parchment? Yeah, is your quill and parchment um, almost ready? Loaded? Yes. Okay. It's loaded. <laughs> Sorry, this is a working comic You mean quill and parchment? Yes, a quill and parchment. <laughs> Please stand so that we can hear. <laughs> we need another quill <laughs> parchment. Check if this one works. They're just bad luck in the area. It should be just something's going on. Oh, I, 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 I suspect foul play. 
1220? No. Yeah. It's 1227. No. No, it's not. Is it? Yes, it is. I'm like, I thought it was like 1257. It's 1228. Miss Lawrence and I are at lunch. I'd show her to you, but there's kids in the classroom um, scrambling because I don't think they're ready for their town hall meeting, even though they had class time yesterday to get ready. And their teacher said, You're not going to get class time, so work on it at home. Um, but they're over there. Um, I'm having a salad. Let me see if I can get. <laughs> There's Miss Lawrence having something that she's made, looking her 90s best. Mm -hmm. And then um, another teacher's coming to join us because we have to get together because we have to present at a staff meeting next Friday. next Friday. So. The first town hall meeting went well. I had the kids put on the costumes that I had just to see if they fit, and they were quite comical. Um, overall, the kids did a good job of like explaining their side. We took a vote, and my homeroom class voted to comply with the British, which is kind of surprising. So that's what's up right now. I will check in with you guys. Out. Okay, it's the end of the day. It's 2.45. School was dismissed 15 minutes ago. All in all, I believe, whoa, I got some footage. Um, let me get out of the sun. I got some footage of the town hall meeting with my homeroom class. I didn't get any footage with my switch class. Um, I thought it went well. Um, the kids had fun. I did have some kids put on the costumes. I really wanted just to see how they fit on different body types because what I purchased, I just purchased every costume in large because I'd rather the costume be too big than too small. So that worked out well. I tried the costumes on all different body types, so I think we're good to go there. Um, my switch class, I did have to give them a slight, uh, I don't want to say lecture, but they were less prepared than my homeroom class. I had a couple panelists in my switch class that just, for whatever reason, didn't know what to say, even though they had class time to prepare and actually write out their statement. And in the directions that I gave them, I don't think I showed this to you guys, but I gave them clear directions and gave them questions that they needed to respond to and told them that this part of the assignment you are actually writing down what you would say if you get selected as a panelist and so everything that i gave them as far as the guiding questions came directly from history alive so um, i just put it in a document to make it easier and to provide some accountability so each person the group of three got a copy of this on google classroom and they had to write their responses to each of these questions or statements so they had to respond to whether or not they thought the proclamation of 1763 was fair or unfair based on the person they were assigned um, whether or not they thought the stamp act was fair and the quartering act and then they had to decide, would your person say that colonists should comply, oppose, or rebel against British rule or the British government? Um, oppose meant protest but not declare independence, whereas rebel meant declare complete independence. And then here it says draft the statement your person will be sharing at our town hall meeting. So how a, a student got to the panel, the town hall meeting today, and didn't know what to say was really beyond me. And then they had to have a rebuttal. They were required to respond to anyone who would disagree. And so I don't know if for some of the kids it was nerves or just they didn't know where to look. Um, but that happened for a couple panel members in my switch class and then for one student in my homeroom class. And so their grade will be affected. I mean, they'll still get a passing grade, but instead of getting the full 100 points, they're gonna get, I think I decided 75 points. And so, I'm not sure if I mentioned there's a total of four of these town hall meetings and every person in the group is going to have to be a panelist at some point. Any student who wore a costume will get extra credit um, today, but yeah, I don't have any complaints. I think it was a great activity to kind of share this academic information and then have them kind of respond to what they learn in a more fun and engaging way. So I also projected this for them and went over this before we actually start it um, and just let them know like these are the steps. There's gonna be introductions. I'm gonna pose a question. That's when you're gonna read your statement to the community or the class. And then after everyone has shared their statement, there would be rebuttals. The only thing I'm thinking about doing or changing is possibly buying a few red blue and maybe white shirts so that as each person is speaking um 
we have a visual that tells us whether or not they're a loyalist, a patriot, or a neutralist. And then um, taking a vote at the end. We took a vote at the end of the town hall meeting in both classes. Surprisingly, um, the majority of the class voted to comply. And I said, that's interesting because if that's how colonists really <laughs> Do, if that's what colonists really chose to do, we wouldn't be living here in the United States. Um, but we also think that some of the voting was based on like what your friends said and all of that. So we might change how we vote in the future. But I mean, that's not that big of a deal. So I would say today went well. It was a success. That whole process of doing the town hall meeting meeting takes or took me took the class about 30 minutes. So that is good for me to know going forward. Now, what I need to do is straighten up and get myself packed up because I have to go to another school and I need to be there by 3.15 to do the after school program. It's just like in a little enrichment program. And I basically am just playing board games with elementary school students from 3.30 to 4.15. So I need to be out the door by 3.15, so in the next 30 minutes or so. So, let me get cleaned up and I will talk to you later. Well, I'm at the post office. <laughs> it's 4.38, um, I finished my after school program. As always, it flew by playing board games with kids. And then I got in the car and was like, okay, let me head to the post office before they close. You know, because the post office closes at five. And I went to the post office that I was told I can go to and just as I was getting ready to turn into the parking lot, I thought to myself, I don't even know that, that this post office is open anymore. Like, I think this post office closed down years ago. And that thought was just confirmed because the closer I got to this post office, the more deserted it looked. Because sure enough, this post office is in fact no longer in operation. And it's too late for me to go to the other post office that's on the other side of town because by the time I get there it'll be five o'clock and the post office will be closed so it looks like I will not be sending in this return today but what it was and I'll show you what it is since I was here is let me make sure um it's a pair of pants from Spanx which I myself am surprised by because I've never ordered anything from Spanx before. No Spanx, no nothing. Um, but these pants showed up on my Instagram feed and it it was something like the pants that Oprah swears by or can't live without um, because they look like dress pants, but they feel like leggings or, you know, sweatpants or just something more comfortable than what they actually look like they are. So of course I was like, I need those pants. A, because of that, but B, also because they were kind of wide-legged and I've been wanting to get some wide leg pants recently because uh, all my work pants are just very straight-legged pants. So I ordered two pair. They are pricey, I'm not gonna lie. And I thought I ordered a pair of blue pants and a pair of black pants and I accidentally ordered two pairs of blue pants. And I wore the blue pants the week we came back from winter break and I don't know that I would say that the pants feel like you're wearing leggings or sweats um but they are comfortable enough and they I had since I've never worn anything by Spanx I was like shook by how like cinched in and in clothes they made you feel not in a bad way but it felt like nothing excuse me nothing was gonna jiggle while I was in those pants so I contemplate it and I am still kind of contemplating whether or not I'm going to return these and then get a, I have the hiccups and get a black pair or if I'm just going to return these and look for some wide leg black pants somewhere else. And I kind of feel like that's what I'm thinking because these pants are not cheap. I will try and remember to put the link in the description box and if you click on the link, you will see that these pants are not cheap. So um, we failed. So I cannot officially say I accomplished all top three items on my to-do list today. I did book my hotel for the conference. I've started lesson planning, which to me is me checking it off because I know I'm going to go home and work on that. Um, but I did not get my pants returned to the post office. And this is the second time I have tried this week. The last time I didn't go to the post office because I thought I had to print out the label and then I found out today I could just show them a QR code, but I still would not have been able to do it because I would have come to this very same post office that doesn't even exist anymore. So I'm gonna go home. I am going to walk Riley 
and um the next time I check in with you guys I'm probably going to talk about just the habits that I'm trying to either build or continue to work on in 2023 um and just some of the things that I've been doing since the start of the new year and that I would like to continue to do and then I'll probably close the vlog from there and um yeah so let me just go ahead and take myself home since we are clearly not making this return anymore and i will see you guys oh, did i break a nail no i didn't i will see you guys after my walk with Riley. let's go Okay, I'm home now. It's a little bit after 6.30. I've been home probably for about an hour to an hour and a half. I took Riley on his walk. It was a very frigid walk um, for me. Southern California was 50 degrees outside and the wind was blowing. Um, and Riley was really, you know, showing out in the cold. He is now downstairs resting. He always comes back from his walk and he goes and lays on his little orthopedic bed until he feels rested. So that's where he's at. Um, and then I sat on the couch, ate a snack, and then went on a productive Instagram rant about like the concept of white supremacy and this class that was rejected in Florida and all of that. So I'm not gonna rehash it because I know a lot of you follow me on Instagram and maybe you've seen it. Um, but before I close out the vlog, I did wanna kinda touch base and talk about what I'm trying to do in 2023. Um, I don't know what it is, but just this year, and really the past few months, I've just felt like I just need, I need to find some more peace in my life, I guess is the best way to put it. My life is not in chaos. It's not anything tragic that's happened, but I just really desire a quieter mind. So I'm looking to do things that kind of help me keep just more calm, feeling less like overstimulated, less active. I don't really know how to explain it. Um, and so I think on New Year's or New Year's Eve just before, I um, saw this post that was like, here are some habits you can try and implement in 2023 that will that should make you overall a better person. So of course I took a look at it to see what it was and it was actually a lot of really good things. So this is really like these six things are really um, a good summary of what it is I'm trying to do in general. I wanted to keep it simple. I wanted to keep it light. So I'm just gonna read the six things to you. Um, so the first one, is waking up at 5 a.m. Now this one, I already wake up early in the morning, Monday through Friday. I'm usually up by five against my will. Um, so I'm just gonna need to continue to do that one. The premise behind this one is just if you wake up early, you'll be more productive in the day. I don't necessarily agree with that. So on the weekends, I'm not waking up at 5 a.m. Like I'm gonna wake up whenever I feel like it. That generally is around nine o'clock. I don't feel like I'm any less productive because I wake up that late because I tend to be a night person and I'll do a lot of things at night. Um, but that's the first one. So for me, it's more so focused on Monday through Friday, making sure I'm up out of the bed by five so that I can get to work at a reasonable hour and so that I can make sure that I'm getting my exercise in because that's the time of day that I choose to do it. The second one is writing down your thoughts before bed. So for that, I actually bought this gratitude journal where yes, I am writing down my thoughts, um, but focusing and making myself focus on writing down positive thoughts. So I got this from Commit 30. They make a bunch of different journals. I chose their joy journal because that's what I was looking for. And every day you write down something that you're grateful for. Then you write down how you're gonna choose joy that day. Um, what are you letting go of? What are you focusing on instead? Then you write down three things that brought you joy throughout the day. And then you can track habits that you wanna build. Like, did you drink water? Were you present? Did you meditate? Did you journal? Did you move your body? Did you spin outside? time outside did you limit your screen time etc so i've been doing that every day since i got the journal i want to say i got this around 
January 3rd. So I didn't start right at the new year. And I do feel like it's made me feel better. I know that I had one year where I wrote down something I was thankful for every day. And I did that on Facebook back in the day when I was using it. And I do remember it making me feel better. And um, that was why I wanted to go back to doing something like that. And I thought having it in an actual journal would help. And so this is a habit I'm trying to build that I have to do that before I go to bed. Um, number three, learning an online skill for 30 minutes a day. We're skipping that one. I don't feel like I need to learn another skill right now. So that one I'm ignoring, but it's supposed to, um, I don't know, just help you feel more secure financially because now you have a skill set that you might be able to monetize. Number four, spend one hour a day exercising. That I just need to continue to be consistent with and build upon. I do exercise at least an hour a day. Um, five days a week, I take two days off to give my body time to rest. But on those two days off, I do need to work on like at least stretching or something along those lines. Um, we know that physical exercise is good for your mental health and physical health. So I need to continue to do that. Number five, sit in silence for 10 minutes a day. This one, it, it's kind of hit and miss. Like this is probably the hardest one for me to do because I do have to schedule 10 minutes where I'm just sitting in silence and it's just the idea of practicing mindfulness, being where you are, when you are there, not worrying about anything else. So one of the ways I've tried to do this is in the morning when I have my bowl of cereal that I just sit and eat the cereal. I'm not eating the cereal and doing something else like checking my phone, um, trying to pack my lunch or just, just sitting down and eating the cereal. The only thing is it doesn't take me 10 minutes to eat a bowl of cereal so I'm not technically doing the 10 minutes. So I wanna continue to work on that. And then six, create a proper sleep schedule. That I do. Um, so for me, this is just more about making sure I actually turn the lights out by 9.30 so that when I wake up at 4.30 in the morning, Monday through Friday, I've got my seven hours of sleep. Um, the weekends, I'm getting my seven hours of sleep, so I don't really worry too much about that. But, you know, we need adequate sleep for our mental health our mental performance, our physical performance, improving our mood, etc. And then it also says no screen time two hours before bed, no eating two hours before bed. That one I have implemented, I've been working and really making sure that I don't eat two hours before I go to bed. Um, make sure your room is nice and cool, use blackout curtains. I don't have blackout curtains, but my room is always very cold when I sleep because that's just how I like to sleep and it is the best sleep that you'll get in my opinion. Number seven, take a 30 minute walk in nature. I walk Riley. It takes about 30 minutes. Um, this is supposed to help you get rid of anxiety, increase your happiness, improve your mood. Um, just your overall day should be better. And I will say that when I walk Riley and the past week or so I've been walking Riley without listening to a book or looking on TikTok or checking Instagram, just walking and listening to the sounds of being outside. And it has made me feel better. So I do agree with that. Number eight, read 20 pages a day. This is a skill or a habit that I just need to be more consistent with. I do like to read. I used to read very consistently years ago. And then since then it's been very spotty, very hit and miss, but I have been getting my 20 minutes in a day I think I've missed a day or two where maybe it was like 10 or I didn't get to read at all, but it's been like one or two days. So this is my current book, um, The Fountains of Silence. It is set in Spain in the 1930s. It's been a really great read because now that I've been to Spain uh, and it's set in Madrid mostly, there's several places that are mentioned in this book that I actually got to see when I was there. So that's been really fun to kind of acknowledge that I know what they're talking about in the book. Uh, but reading is supposed to increase your knowledge, of course, increase your self-confidence, and I just find it something to, relaxing to do before I go to bed. So those are the habits that I'm really trying to build in 2020 and really trying to focus on scaling back wherever I can. I feel like I've mentioned that before, and so far I'm feeling more calm like this week i've been less present on social media and that has made me feel more calm and that's something that i really have to think about going forward when i think about how i want to use social media or if i want to use social media and how much social media i want to get myself involved with so that's really the last thing i wanted to share with you guys so i'm gonna take a shower i'm gonna head out and get something tasty to eat on a Friday, probably in and out because I have a gift card. And then I'm just gonna relax. 
else. I might do a little bit of work tonight or I might save it until tomorrow. Um, but a couple of things I do want to mention. One of the things that has caused me a little bit of anxiety that I'm really trying to, you know, manage better is if you don't follow me on Instagram, I think I mentioned before when my parents were victims of a massive scam with Zelle um, and lost tens of thousands of dollars. And so trying to figure out how to help them recover from that has been a challenge if you guys are interested in supporting my family or really yeah just supporting my family no shame here like they lost a total of forty three thousand dollars a little bit more than that and that was money they needed um, i'm gonna add the gofundme link in the description box any amount that you choose to give will be greatly appreciated and if you can't give but you can share the link that's also appreciated as well I'm just trying to stay optimistic in the situation and my family and, I, family and I are looking into options that we have. Zelle is not being very helpful, nor is B of A, so we're kind of on our own. Um, so there's that. And then lastly, because I am a partner with Ana Luisa, I want to remind you to check them out. Um, Valentine's Day is coming up. Uh, Saturday's coming up. You don't really need an excuse to buy something for yourself, but they always have great deals. I will have a discount code in the description box. I love their jewelry, as I've said before. I have tons of earrings, rings, necklaces, gold, silver, bracelets, you name it, they have it. And like I said earlier, they are sustainable. Um, the quality is great. Price ranges are wide, so you can spend as little or as much as you like. They often have buy one, get one, get something for yourself and a friend. Um, so make sure you check them out. Anna Luisa, you will not regret it. And aside from that, guys, I honestly don't know when I'll see you again. I'm not on a real regular blogging schedule anymore because again, I'm trying to quiet my mind. But I certainly, as always, hope that you are well and that if you are not well, please be well and to, you know, keep it that way until the next time I see you. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna say goodbye. Thank you so much for watching this vlog. Make sure you subscribe, leave a comment, like the video. That always helps. And I will talk to you guys soon.